Want to know why? Ask how. Howard! The humongous. There's a new film that's going up on Kickstarter called Canary in the Coal Mine that's raised $100,000 in its first four days. And there's a new study from a Cambridge University researcher named Sriva Chenu in the journal Neuroimage. Neuroimage. I often do not enunciate well. And the two of them connect. Let me see if I can show you how. The new study shows that one out of 21 people in a coma tested on two different measures, measures with electroencephalographs and with neuromagnetic resonance imaging devices, fMRIs, functional magnetic resonance imaging devices. One patient deemed to be in a coma, a vegetable in a vegetative state, turned out not to be in a vegetative state at all. The fMRI and the um, receptors of electrical activity on the scalp both indicated the same thing, that the patient was in fact alive, the patient was in fact awake, the patient was in fact paying attention, the patient was in fact capable of following doctor's orders, even though the patient looked like an overcooked asparagus. What does this have to do with Canary in the Coal Mine? Canary in the Coal Mine is a film about an illness called chronic fatigue syndrome. Known more technically, I told you I cannot enunciate, that's known, not known, um, as myalgic encephalomyelitis. It's an illness I had from 1988 to 2003 for 15 years. For 15 years, it kept me a prisoner in a bedroom. For 15 years, I could not have another person in the room with me. For 15 years, in the beginning, when my wife lay down on the bed and tried to keep me company and opened the pages of a newspaper, the sound of the pages turning went through me like a cannon shot and felt as if they were tearing me apart. We rapidly learned I could have no one in the room. My parents would drive down 450 miles from Buffalo, New York, and I began to become aware of something. You think your parents will last forever. I began to become aware of the fact that eventually they would die, and I had no idea of how long I would stay in this almost vegetative state. They could only be allowed in the room with me for 10 minutes. They had to sit at the very farthest edge of the room, and they had to stay absolutely quiet so they didn't make the kind of noises that would roll through me like a cannonball at high speed, the way the sound of the newspaper pages turning had. What's worse, for five years, I was too weak to speak. For five years, I looked like an overcooked broccoli. I looked like an overcooked asparagus. People didn't know if there was any me in there or not. And yet, entire sentences, entire paragraphs, entire books of thoughts were rolling through my head, and I could not express them in any way at all. I could, at most, wriggle my eyebrows, and even that I did pathetically, and believe me, there's no way that even a yes or a no comes across when you wriggle your eyebrows. I suddenly realized that my whole life I've been seeing movie scenes in which the camera trundles down um, between the beds of a hospital board, and you see a person wrapped up like a mummy, totally encased in bandages and plaster of Paris. All that's visible is his or her eyes, and even those are hidden in a tiny slit. And I had always taken it for granted that the person in that condition, with an arm or a leg raised on some sort of a hoist, was as immovable an object, was as much a thing, not a person, as a log in a fireplace. And all of a sudden, I realized, no, those people who look like logs are living, thinking, breathing people with entire philosophies. 
with entire clouds, storms of emotion rolling through their brain, and they cannot convey them to a soul, which meant if I ever got the opportunity to walk down between the beds in a hospital ward again, and I saw one of those immobile figures, I had to realize there was a person in there. And it, that was the person it was most important to stop and talk to and spend time with, because that person was the prisoner in the greatest amount of pain. Jen Bray, the maker of the canary coal in the coal mine, had the opening party for her film to knock off her Kickstarter campaign a week ago. I was a guest. We all stood in a room with cocktails in our hand. Well, I don't actually drink cocktails. I said stood there empty-handed for two hours while the party commenced. The trailer for the film was shown twice. I'm in it because this film is important to my life. And when all the other speeches were over, I tried to remind the, remind the crowd of something very basic. Most of us with illnesses of this kind, and it isn't just chronic fatigue syndrome, can't even lift a voice to let somebody know that we are there. We are the people in the most desperate strait of all, and it's the voiceless, the people who cannot be found, the people on whom there are no statistics, the people who cannot even lift their voice to ask for help. Those are the people who need the most help of all. And that is what the study from the Cambridge University researcher demonstrated. Some of those who look like vegetables are not vegetables at all. And it is extraordinarily important that those of us who can walk, talk, fly to Moscow and Kuala Lumpur, reach out to touch them and let them know we know they are humans just as real as you and I. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job with a little empathy to make. And now for the absurd part where I cannot find the off button. There it is. <laughs>